friends, I'm Amy Ellis and this is So Modern Quilts. I'm really glad to be back today with the next installment in the Modern Quilt Block series. And today's block is called Positive. And it just felt right. There's so much happening around us every day that's not positive and I felt like putting a little bit of positive energy into my sewing. So, Positive is a really basic block in terms of there's no half square triangles, there's no points to match, everything just kind of sews together really simple. There's a pattern in the description below. Be sure to pick your copy up this week while it's free and let's go ahead and get started. So this is all the pieces for my positive block and you can see some are fairly large and some are a little bit smaller. So we're going to start with the smallest pieces that need to be attached in this case and then work our way out from the center. So my first step is to just get these little rectangles attached. And this gives it the, uh, the floating effect in the middle of the see you know the background they're small but they're straight so even though there's a lot of pieces they're all straight there's no half square triangles to assemble so hopefully this doesn't um, put you off at all with the small pieces you just need to take your time and I find using the tips of my fingers or if you need a like a stiletto or even a pen you can use a pen sometimes to kind of you know shift things into place where they need to be. So don't let the smallness stop you and we're just going to stitch all of these with a nice quarter inch seam allowance and move on to the next steps. Alright so these little pieces are sewn and pressed into place and I just went ahead and pressed away from the center. Um, one other little tool that is helpful when I'm stitching with a lot of small pieces is a a starter just something to sink my thread into to where when I get to my seam I can go straight into it without a lot of thread jumbles or you know coming unthreaded and it helps keep my seam straight as well so this is <laughs> obviously been used quite a bit but I just fold over a couple layers of fabric so that it's the same thickness as what I'm sewing in my typical piecing and then stitch through it over and over again. A lot of people will also use an actual project as a starter and I'm, I'm never quite that <laughs> organized. So I just use some scrap fabric and it keeps all of my thread to a minimum in my project. So our next steps are to stitch, actually let's go this way, this smaller unit to the background square and I'm going to add a couple of pins here a lot of times I'll just add pins just to help me remember exactly where it goes and other times it's to match things up. So our block is coming together. I really love the pop of pink with the, the gr neutral ground and then the, the gray surrounding it. I think it's going to be really fun. I'm going to add the final background squares to either side. Alright, so here is what it looks like on the back. My seams are all pressed away from the center. A lot of times I will press towards the dark fabric, but in this case I want it to lay nice and flat and since I, there was already a seam here, it just made sense to press it towards the larger square. So our next steps are to go ahead and piece this center unit between the two previous sewn units. So I'm going to pin and sew that in place. Oh, that one wants to pop up for right now, but we're going to go ahead and continue stitching and I'm just going to pin and sew this into place and our center will be done. Here's our block center and then we just have these four exterior pieces to sew in place. And I don't always do this kind of border-like treatment to blocks, but I felt like it was going to be kind of fun and it turns out the layout options are really fun with with this because they each have their own space. So I just went ahead and did it and I might do a few more this way too just to help um, with other layout options. I think it's kind of fun. So we're going to sew the shorter sides in place first and then we'll come back and stitch the long ones to finish the block. Okay, so here's where we're at. We have everything pressed and laying nice and flat. 
Um, these ones definitely took a little extra effort to get flat, but they're, they're there now. Um, and maybe a little spritz of water would have helped. I don't keep steam in my iron, <laughs> and I didn't have it handy while I was pressing. But um, we are ready for the last step, which is to stitch this set of rectangles in place. All right, so there's our finished positive block, and I'll show you the back side so you can see how everything's pressed, and all these pressing instructions are included in the, the pattern as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the layout options that I have. So that's all fairly straightforward and not too difficult. I hope some of those tips that I gave you for dealing with small pieces are helpful. Let's look at the layout options that I have set up for positive. The first one is just positive by itself and I alternated the color placement to kind of give it a checkerboard effect. I really love how these lay out together and you would just need to turn one set on its side and there's no seams to match. So that one's really simple, straightforward and could be a great scrappy project with your small pieces and a, a nice background fabric that kind of unites everything. Next I have positive and focus and I thought this was fun because of the way that the different spokes interact with the the frame around the plus shape in the positive block. Next I have positive plus activation and this is really straightforward as well but it, I love how the the blocks play together and you get this um, focus on different elements kind of a secondary it moves your eye around the quilt there's a lot to look at and then positive plus three squared I just kind of loved all the little pieces and thought they would play well together <laughs> so it's uh, it's a graphic quilt that could really be used in a lot of different uh, ways but there's so many things that you could do with this block and all the rest of the blocks. I hope that if you're just tuning in, you'll go check out the entire collection. There are 39 blocks now and they all mix and match together. So you can add <laughs> to your heart's content one of each or you could do a, you know, a group of four or five. Be sure to check out the description below for my pattern and also you know, sign up to get emails so that you don't miss a block ever. Um, I would love to have you subscribe to the channel and stitch with me every week. And please give me a quick thumbs up if you enjoy this content. I look forward to stitching with you again real soon.